So, portable Nigerian singer who came into the industry in a kind of a uh, ragamuffin way, you know what I mean? Not really ragamuffin way, you know, the rough way. He came in there, humble on the floor, prostrating here and there, and certain people who have deep insight. They looked at him and they said, oh, this guy, you have gone to do some juju work. And that juju work, we don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know what will happen. That juju work is helping you to do what you're doing, to get what you're getting. But you will regret because this juju work, when it begins to require bigger sacrifice or when it begins to fail, you will regret. You will end in a bad way. Now, those who are practitioners of African traditional worship, those that are not Christians or Muslims, they are saying these things. And some that are also practitioners, they are looking at what he did, and some of them are saying, this is this, this is that. Now, in Nigeria, there is something called freedom of religion. We have Christianity with its denomination. We have Islam also with its denomination. And we have the traditional worshippers who worship various deities. Portable, for the first time, apart from talking about it, he has decided to associate himself publicly to show you, 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 you there what he believes in and what he claims works for him. Um, now, people are saying that Portable did this so that people will contact him. I mean, upcoming and people want to attain, people want to achieve, people who are frustrated to contact him. It's more like a publicity. Or did the deities instruct Portable to do what he's doing? Come over. Show me in public so that I can show you more in public. Or Portable did this because he had already promised this deity, if you can help me get to the US, if you can connect me the way I want to be connected, I will come out publicly to show the world that this is what did it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see and watch. See Portable bowing down to idols, deities that he believes in. Do not forget to like and share. Do not forget to tap on the subscribe button. Let's get right into it. Oh, 
Welcome back. Now, <laughs> our portable, portable, portable. Um, this is not uh, a place to drag one person up or down. Like I said, freedom of religion. Nobody should be forced or not forced or, you know, whatever. To choose whatever they choose or whatever they want. Um, it reminds me of one man called the Ghana Seer. He will continuously say Africa is for the idols, for the gods. Africa belongs to the gods. Africa belongs to the gods. So there are people who connect to these things. They believe in it. And they go to embrace these deities for whatever they want. Some do it secretly. Some do it publicly. Yeah. Same as people embrace Christianity. They testify in church and they do all that they do in church. It's the same you'll find among Muslims. Everyone has that right to associate, gather together amongst faithfuls or believers in whatever they do or believe in, whatever it is. It's, it's okay for everyone to do whatever and be whatever they want to be. But... On the street, people are beginning to say, oh, poor table, this is what you believe in. This is what you do. So you are doing juju, you are doing jazz. Now, those that are custodians or practitioners of what poor table is into, they are quick to say, what do you mean? Let us embrace our deity so that we can progress. A lot of talks like that. So this brings me back to this question that I want to put out to you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I want you to answer this question. Back in those days in Africa, before the advent of Christianity as we know, or Islam as we know, majority of Africans used to be practitioners of these deities. In fact, a lot will say the gods of our father, meaning their father had put a lot of energy into serving these deities. How come? People of other race who are Muslims, people of other race who are maybe, let's say, Christians by birth or by association, they might not be practitioner of what is written in that Bible, but they will say, I am a Christian. They came with their boats and ships. They landed in Africa. They came slowly, slowly, slowly. And they were able, out of all race, brown skin, melanated people, they were enslaved. Why didn't, like the gods that Portable is paying homage to, why didn't that god help fight those so-called Christians who came to enslave them? Or those that will say uh, we were born into a Christian family or we believe in Christianity. Or is it that those that came, because we need to be clear, don't think all Caucasian mistakenly called white people are Christians. No. Some of them don't believe in God. Some don't even are not Christians. Some of them are Luciferians, meaning they worship Satan. Yes, they worship Satan. They are occultic. I mean, like, is it that those ones that came are highly placed, like these are worshippers of Aya. In fact, they are not worshipping uh, Ogun, Yemoja, Oshu, uh, God of Thunder. God of those are maybe, those are small, small deities compared to the ones that they pay. They, 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 these ones, they move with bafflement. They move with the, you know, we have uh, 
um, principalities. We have rulers. You know, you know, we have those type. We have dominion, principalities, rulers of darkness, wickedness in high places. Maybe the ones that are embraced like portable are the wickedness in high places. Maybe those people that came, they connected with principalities, dominions, so that they can take over the world. You know what I mean? Maybe that's what they did. Like, you know what? We are not going for these small, small deities where you have to put incision on the body. Or have you seen any Caucasian with incision, cutting on the body? Those are wickedness in low places. Cutting incision on your body. Um, you know, the shrine is very dirty at times. Most of the times, all the shrines in Africa, they are always full of, you know, they have to put libation, palm oil, food, chicken, blood, you know, very dirty. Have you seen... Or do you think those Caucasians don't have their own association with the kingdom of darkness? They do. They do. In fact, they package it even under their so-called Christian denomination. They do it. They do. So, there's, you will not find maybe such dirtiness that much, you know, with their altar or shrine. That doesn't mean they don't do human sacrifice too. That doesn't mean they don't do any of this, this, this terrible things they do. So question, so we don't derail. Why didn't the, like the masquerade, which signifies the ancestral spirits and the other ones that you saw, those deities, why didn't they help those that were enslaved? Now, a worshiper, custodian, of water spirit how didn't the water stop the boat from taking those people down to the caribbean and the u.s to be enslaved why why didn't he help all of these african nations now kingdoms empires that now became countries how come it did not help them it didn't help them it didn't protect their interests there is only one country in africa that was never enslaved and we were told why and that country had connections with what we call christianity today ethiopia was never ever ever they were never enslaved they said they had tigers they had lions they had those animals that protected them that tore those colonial criminals into pieces it was not ogun it's not Yemoja. It's not any of those. So why is it that those ones that had that? Oh, some of you might say they turned their heart against the gods before they enslaved them. Trill, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you really sure? Or they accepted to be enslaved because they were involved in... Just drop your comments. Let us talk about it.